So we're out here, you know, in, on a sand sheet here in South Texas. Right, we came out here to collect Prunus Texanus seed. The Texas apricot, one of the most delicious native fruits. It only gets about two or three feet tall, but forms these bushes that, you know, can last for a while and tolerate just getting blasted with heat. They grow on sand, got a deep tap root. And uh, we got distracted because there's just so much cool stuff out here, including this guy, which is a really weird one. This is Pomaria austrotexana. It's a legume. You can see it's got a flower with a really distinct shape. You can see those that keel petal and those uh, that lower petal and those those stamens. Look at the pollen. It's like a deep burgundy red. The whole thing's covered in glands. This is an exceptionally rare plant. Very rare. I've only read about it before. This is the first time I've actually encountered it. It kind of looks like Erythrostem and Caudatum. Same subfamily, the Sacel pinnoid subfamily of the pea family, but uh, but different. And then there's those fruits, which look like they're basically ripe. So we're going to collect some seed of this. You can see, look at the glands. It's got a very distinct smell to it, and it's grown with another cool plant right here, Hermania texana, which has those little pendant flowers in the cotton family Malvaceae. Most of that genus is on the African continent. There's like four or five species that uh, somehow made it across the Atlantic, probably in the plumage of a bird sometime in the last few million years, and have gotten established here. So, and then of course we got Dotter, uh, the Cascuta. I don't know what species that is. It's probably one of the rare ones that I think I've photographed before, but they all kind of look the same, so I don't really bother with species ID. I just know it's a Dotter. It's a genus. In uh, Convolvulaceae, the morning glory family, a lot of good stuff here, though. And so uh, we're going to be keep getting distracted. A lot of good shit. You can see this has formed this nice colony right here. But look at those flowers. Pomaria austra texana. Definitely got to see this in more native plant gardens here. It's a shame it's so rare. Growing on sand, super heat and drought tolerant. Resistant through herbivory because it's got those glands that smell so pungent on it. Look at the, look at the buds. Too. before look at the flower before they open look at all those red glands those sticky glands what an incredible flower though you could tell it's i guess it i would suppose it's a uh, pollination syndrome is probably some kind of large bee but uh whatever's going in there is obviously coming out with pollen dusted all over the bottom part of its abdomen incredible flower though look at that it's a stunner Look, there's more of that pomaria right there. God, that is a stunner of a plant. Holy hell, those flowers really, they're really going, they're doing it for me. God, what's up with that? Those triaceas, you got this nice tetranurus too. It's tetranurus scoposa, but it looks a little bit hairier than the rest. It's another great native plant. Wish that more people were growing. Forms an awesome ground cover. Looks really good up against the sidewalk. You know, so after you kill your lawn, you could, I mean, I, you could probably grow that. Just make a lawn out of this. It's like, but it's like a little woody subshrub. It's technically a shrub. It's got woody tissue down there. Get those hairy leaves. Built for the Texas heat. Can't say the same about your stupid crepe myrtles. God, there's a bunch of good stuff. I didn't even come out trying to make a video. There's just too much good stuff. Really weird. It's like a blend of like the sand sheet and then... Oh, look at that little flax. And then uh, more deep south Texas thorn scrub stuff. And then nice little linum. Beautiful flower. Yeah, look at it. This is that one. The only only two plants here are that pomaria. Why is it so rare? What a cool plant. Growing right beneath the Texas persimmon with the Hermania Texan. That's another great plant that you don't see in cultivation. All these sand plants get really deep tap roots. I've noticed that about all of them. There's this Feralcia here. It'll have eight inches of taproot, unbranching taproot coming up from a central tuber. Got Salvia bellata flora right here. Another banger. A couple nurseries are starting to sell this, including uh, Barton Springs Nursery in Austin. A couple other, couple other ones. Oh, you got that, uh, what is that, Convolvulacea down there? Or that uh, Facilia. Got Col Colubrina right here. Hog plum, they call it. Ramnaceae. Look at that divericating zigzag branching. I think that's a defense against the bivery, but it also looks incredibly cool. And of course, some Senesos, but you never see them looking like that in the shopping centers, do you? Because they just use that lame cultivar, probably all the same clone. Got a couple cool ones here. This is Discaristi, Discariste linearis. Look at that, look like a little monkey mouth. Little monkey, almost looks like a monkey flower. Family Acanthaceae. 
chalky mint green foliage. Get this up oh, as far as north as Fort Worth. So I know, and then this one's for Elsia pedatifida. This is a rare one, only known from the area between San Antonio. Look at those leaves. Holy shit, only known from the area between San Antonio and South Texas. Heavily dissected leaves, typical Sphorelsia flower. Cotton family Malvasi. Two great tastes that go uh, great together, growing here on the sand. Now this is just done flowering, and it's one of the meanest plants in Texas. It's got those cat claws, those recurved spines on it. My friend gave it to me. My friend Zach gave it to me, I think, when he was mad at me. And uh, I've torn my flesh open many times. I've got it in my garden, and it gets, you know, I pruned mine nine feet tall. So it's just a single stem and all the thorns are at the top. You can see here they're topping out at like four feet. The flowers smell absolutely incredible though when it goes up. They smell de so delightful. You can smell from 10 feet away like so many of the Senegalias. There, look, more more Pomaria. God, these little, this is, this road is a hidden gem. We just, you know, it's amazing with taking a wrong turn. No one's come down here either. It's rare you find a public road like this in Texas that's so intact, you know, botanically especially in you know where it's it's it hasn't been mowed or cleared and it's so remote god damn it well wow, nice uh nice brazil right there nice uh condalia but look at this pomaria man it's uh, it's readily abundant and these even though they're not quite ready you could i will cut this at the bottom of that stalk since it's still green and then just let it mature in a bag but you got to put it in a paper bag because these explosively dehiss when they're when the fruit is mature, I take the ones that look a little bit more red or brown, but definitely cut it at the bottom of the stock, put it in a paper bag. Put it in a bag! God, why is this not being grown? Does, does LBJ Wildflower Center have some of these? A botanic institution? They should. Look at how the, the petals are just cupped in that bottom keel petal, too. I'm so interested in the biology, the uh, rather pollination biology, the ecology. Like, what pollinates these? If I had more time... And maybe if I was into smoking grass or something, I'm not really, but you gotta gotta be into smoking grass to sit in a place and do a pollination stuff. How many pollination biologists are potheads? Uh, probably a lot more than would it than would readily admit to it. We got buffalo grass incursion there. I'm gonna have to get that rip that out. God, what a great plant. So rare. Why have you eluded me for so long? Why are you so rare? You obviously do very well. Once you get established, you form these nice little colonies. Look at all these little seedlings too. You know, I've been down here long enough. I know what the, all these guys are. That's uh, the native Helianthus, is Helianthus argophyllus. This is uh, Palafoxia, potentially hooker, hookeriana, the giant Palafox, which looks like this. It's it's very sticky too. It traps insects. Got the dotter everywhere. More of that uh, Pomaria, whole other colony of it. I haven't seen any rattlers yet. I wonder why. It's, not, it's just getting hot now. Normally you see rattlesnakes in this kind of territory. More of that salvia, the colubrina, texana, the hog plum. There you go. See, there's a prunus texana. Blends in with the uh, with the colubrina. Got the same branching structure, similar leaf structure. These aren't really ready yet, but that might be how oh, that it comes off. Yeah, I'm picking them a little premature, and it's all right. Again, a travesty, a crime that not many people grow this. Hey, look, that Pomaria is everywhere now, up on this little embankment. There's just, there's got to be 50 plants here. God, we really, I mean, we are, you know, we are kind of deep in a cut, but still, cool to see. And then there's that Hermania, and you can see the fruits, very distinct fruit on this Melvin. And that Malvasi right there, very cool little capsule. There's some sort of damn rodents having a wonderful time. Uh, just, you see the tunnels everywhere. Here's a cool composite, Sclerocarpus. Unicerialis. Look at the florets on that too. Look at those brown. You can see the. I love composites when they make it. Certain species make it really easy to tell what's going on with members of the sunflower family. That it's a bunch of tiny flowers grouped together in one. That it's an aggregate flower, and you can see that on this very easily. You can see the individual flowers. There, there's a lot of space between them. They're not grouped super close together, but they're fused, of course, at the base, and the whole thing resembles a single flower with five petals. Look at the nice, look at the nice patterns inside that flocks, inside that linum. Let's find one that's not, that's a gorgeous plant, look at that. Linaceae, the flax family. 
And then we got Silostrophe. This is actually the genus that's most closely related to the plant that was just discovered in West Texas in Big Bend National Park. Look how woolly it is. Silostrophe, it looks like. Nephelioides. Nephelodes. And right here we got Camacrista flexuosa, variety Texana, which is another sand lover. Look at that cool branching, that kind of zigzag branching. Those feathery leaves, and then of course you got those little yellow flowers. These This genus forms shrubs and even small trees in Brazil. It's super diverse, hyper diverse in Brazil. Look, it's got kind of crooked flowers. And Nantheostylus flowers, you can see that style juts out. It's not in the center of the flower, it juts out to either the left or the right. And then those anthers are porocidal. They got pores in them. So they're, they're for buzz pollination for the bees. You can see on the end of those, see, they got, it's like a little tube. You can see on the end of those anthers, they got a hole. So this is cool. This is a lantana you don't often see. This is Lantana acaranthifolia, or the brushland lantana. And it's a, it's a lot more built for drought than a lot of the other species. You can see those stiff little hairs on those leaves. Whole thing just covered in this indument of hairs that protect it from uh, help reflect the sun and also mitigate that uh, loss of uh, water vapor from the stomata and there's those inflorescences i just saw some weird little bee fly pollinating these things flew with a very high pitch funny looking you know fat little bastard with green eyes and a long proboscis you can see this thing is this would be another one just that this is why native plants are so good they're built for the heat look at this it's growing on the side of a freaking dirt road getting blasted with the sun it's so hot. It's already like 88 degrees. It's oh, a nice cool breeze though. 88 degrees at 11 a.m. Yeah, look at that thing. And evidently it feeds a lot of things too. This is a couple different species of pollinators hitting it. What a weird little insect. You can hear him. This little bee fly. What is he doing, man? Look, Listen to that. Like a high-pitched, look at that, he's sticking his little, it's, it's not a bee, it's a fly. It's technically a fly, but he looks like a bee. Fat little bastard, look at that. Green eyes, he's got that little proboscis, he's sticking, it's very high-pitched. I was wondering what the hell that thing was. It sounded hilarious. Well, we know, we know one of the pollinators of this. There you go, that's the biggest Prunus Texan I've seen. It's about seven, eight feet tall. But the fruits just aren't ready yet. They got set. It was a really dry winter. That thing's small. It's got another week to go probably. It was a dry winter, and then by the time they got, they got enough rain. It was already too late. A lot of the, I think a lot of the flowers just aborted. Delicious though. Last year it was a totally different story. Big apricots on all the trees. This thing probably would have had 200, 200 uh, fruits on it.